friends, thanks a lot for joining me today. This video is something I've never really done before and I can't say I've necessarily seen it done exactly this way. And I don't know if anybody's gonna particularly care for this idea, but to me, to me personally, I think it's fascinating. The idea is this, if money was no object, if you had literally no restraints, no restrictions, what would you put in your Sephora like dream cart? Like I threw a thousand dollars on this to have some kind of parameter, but ultimately the thought is, if nothing was holding you back, what things would you get? And to me, it would fascinate me to watch other people do this. Like, I'd love to know just what things draw you in. And I think in this world where everybody's receiving so much PR, with some creators that kind of takes the personal choice out of the equation a little bit. Whereas in early YouTube days, like, it was all about the haul, right? It was all about what you would go out and find and what inspired you and what made you interested interested that you wanted to buy. You weren't just getting your makeup and therefore your content ideas just dropped in your lap by a brand. So here I think it would be really fun to see like what things would you get if money was no object? And some might say, well, and this is just, you know, promoting consumerism, it's irresponsible or whatever. I would venture to say that this is quite the opposite because I think to me the effect from this is recognizing that I can like things without having to have them. I can be attracted to products. I can see things that I enjoy about them, but ultimately I'm gonna go through this list and say, I'm not gonna get most of this. I might get a couple things, but when I kind of put all this stuff through a second cut, a lot of it's not gonna make it. But if we're just saying, yeah, for the hell of it, pick a thousand dollars worth of stuff from Sephora, here's the stuff I'd pick. And it's kind of oddly, like not in the order I put it in my cart. As I look through what's actually in here, it's sort of all over the place. So hopefully this makes sense as I share it with you. But yeah, if you wanna do this on your channel or your blog or wherever, I think it would be really fun to see. It really is a purely just for fun video because I haven't tried these products. I don't have a ton of background on them. I'm just gonna tell you why I'm into them. So first thing here, this Huda Beauty Silk Balm Hydrating and Nourishing Lip Balm. What interested me about this is because instead of being like a stick lip balm. It claims to be a balm, but it's got a doe foot applicator. And the pictures of the models with this on, granted they've got like lineless lips that maybe have been helped out by a thing or two. I don't know. It looks beautiful on there. And I think it's interesting that it's in this universal blushed pink shade. I could see that being really pretty, just worn alone, giving the shine. I'd love to see what the texture of it is actually like. There was a lot of good feedback from people who used this and said they used it twice daily for seven straight days. Nearly everyone said their lips were smoother, more nourished, etc. So that's 21 bucks and if I was just building my Sephora dream cart here, I would throw that in. Here's another thing from Hourglass, this Illusion Hyaluronic Skin Tint. I don't think this is anything new, but I'm really surprised I haven't heard any buzz about it. It does have SPF 15 in it. You guys know I just got through doing that BB cream and CC cream video, so it's kind of like, all right, already, you don't need any more, but I can't turn off the intrigue with this kind of thing. I would like to try this and see how it works. Um, it says it's for normal to dry skin and has a radiant finish, delivers a radiant glow for smoother, firmer, more youthful looking complexion. So I don't know. I just like to see how that comes off. Um, it claims to be medium coverage. Speaking of hourglass, I've found that I've actually got more Hourglass in my current collection than I really realized, and I'm wondering if you'd be interested in a full face, kind of like what's worth it from Hourglass, let me know in the comments. Here's another coverage product I'm really interested in. I've heard a lot of good feedback from people on this, and this is one of the things that I think ultimately I probably will go ahead and try. It's from Ilia, and it's the Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40 Foundation. It is a clean at Sephora product, and I've heard of people using this alone or like mixing it into other products. It claims to be a light coverage, natural finish. Seems to be for all skin types. And they say it fuses makeup, skincare, and SPF 40 into one single step. It kind of makes me think of a CC cream, BB cream type product, but maybe in a little different texture, right? Dewy finish, doesn't have silicones, fragrance, chemical screens, or oil, it says. So I would really like to try that and see what that's all about. It seems like kind of a different product. Here's something that I saw that had been marked down and the color scheme really, really appeals to me. It's the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina Mini Pro Pigment Palette Volume 2. So this one has some greens, several tones of
of green. It's got a rich berry, a brown, some orange. I look at this and I immediately think summer. Just seeing those colors and those particular tones, it would be such a fun summer friendly palette and kind of inspire some different color combos. I love when a palette does that for me. I love just seeing that orange and the berry side by side. I'm thinking bingo, there's your sunset eye. But I'm also thinking that berry could be so pretty with the green that's also beside it. I like how there's some light shades. There's even a soft yellow. It looks like a soft peach in there as well. But there seems to be some good richness in this palette too. So for 20 bucks, I'm thinking, hey, I might go for that. Let's talk about Pat McGrath for a second. I feel like a Pat palette is something you're really gonna think about before making the purchase. $125. They all look so gorgeous though. I have one of them currently. I have the Bronze Seduction one, which I think might be one of the top selling palettes she makes. And there have been more recently put out like those rose ones, which I thought were nice, but I thought, okay, for this video, I'm going to really look over every Pat palette. And if I could pick one or two, um, what would I get? To me, the most appealing ones are the Mothership 2. I love the mauves in here. I also love that there's that splash of green, but there's also just some really nice basic neutral happening as well. And in my experience, I thought Bronze Seduction looked even more like exponentially more beautiful in person than it did online. I suspect that might be the case here too. Looks like there's a really foiled gold shade. There's um, kind of a softer pink. And I've just noticed that these mauve colors, when I put those on my eyes, it really brings out the greenish kind of hazel tone in them. And I just thought, wow, that's a pretty palette to look at and would probably be a really gorgeous palette on. But maybe even more than that, here's another one that's drawing me in. This is the Midnight Sun palette. And this one, it's got that splash of blue. I was looking at the swatches and the looks created and I thought, wow, kind of a midnight blue, but enough blue to kind of shine and really show. Um, those earthy neutrals that are paired in there with it are really, really speaking to me as well. I feel like I'm seeing kind of a sage green, some rose gold, some gold. This one might be edging out the other one just a little bit. The blue gives it that fun edge and and like I said, looking at the look um, created, I'm like, wow, I would love to try that on my eyes. And if I don't end up following through with that palette, that's something I might try to recreate in my own collection. There's a fun idea, recreating the model's looks on Sephora for different palettes without actually using those palettes. The other thing I put in my cart was the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Longwear Foundation. I know this has been out for a little while, but for whatever reason, I feel like I'm hearing more about it right now. Um, this is gonna be a high coverage product. Matte finish, it says for normal dry and combination skin though. It's got something in it called Replexium to help reduce the appearance of wrinkles. Moss Celtic to help thoroughly hydrate skin and Air Cool provides an immediate fresh feel on skin. So I am pulled into this. They're really trying to play up the fact that, oh, well this is full coverage, but it's not gonna be your typical full coverage dry matte thing. At least that's what they say. Um, this has been around long enough. A lot of you have probably used it. If you've got feedback, let me know in the comments, but I am drawn in by that idea. I put several fresh lip balms in my cart, the fresh sugar lip balms. I was just looking at what they had and was surprised to see so many different shades. I knew they made rose and berry and some different ones, but I didn't know they had something called bloom and it looks so pretty. They call it sensual shimmery pink and I don't know if I've ever tried a sugar lip balm that had shimmer in it. So I'm curious about the shimmer finish and I feel like it would be a total your lips but better type of color on my lips. So I like the look of that one. I like the look of the one called Icon. This one looks like a fresh kind of watermelony warm red. I love that kind of shade this time of year so that was really appealing to me. And then also they've got one called Punch. This one seems a lot like Icon but maybe a little more sheer. It's kind of hard to tell by the way they're presenting them but I'd like to know what is your favorite fresh sugar lip balm? I've really enjoyed the berry one that I have. I like the rose too, but those different ones that I just mentioned really kind of excited me there. Um, okay, money is no object. How about some Artiste brushes? I've talked about so many dupes from different lines and I kind of finally like to try the Real Deal brand and see, is there really that much difference? So they've got this Elite Mirror three-piece brush set. It's $110 and it looks like 
three kind of basic sizes, your largest that you'd probably use for foundation, something a little smaller for concealer, more pinpointed areas, and then a really, really fine one. And yeah, this is just purely out of curiosity. I'd like to know if the quality of these is um, that much different compared to the ones I picked up from Groger or the ones I picked up from different, you know, well-known but lesser cost brands. Let's see, I'd like to know, or is there maybe just one brush from that line I could use and that might tell the tale, I don't know. But I threw the three pack into my cart. Here's another brush I was interested in, the Pat McGrath Sublime Perfection Foundation Brush. I do have um, already her foundation and I like it. It's kind of growing on me. At first I remembered thinking, wow, it's so sheer. Is it really doing enough to be worthwhile? But I've been playing with it some more. I've been sort of messing with my application, putting it on, putting concealer on, and then kind of like gently dabbing over my face with a little more of this on a beauty blender and it actually creates a really pretty finish. But I saw that she has a brush available for that and it's kind of making me wonder, hmm, would that change the game of the application of that foundation? So I put that in my cart as well. Also from Bobbi Brown, this Nude Finish Illuminating Setting Powder. Here's something that I feel like I've seen for a long, long time and I'd just like to finally try it. As you can see, it's kind of this mosaic face powder, comes in a variety of tones and they call it an ultra soft translucent powder that gives skin a lit from within glow with a natural blend of botanicals and brightening light reflective powders. So it might be a really pretty just end of the look all over face powder. I'm imagining that maybe in a more concentrated way it could practically highlight, I'm thinking. It just looks really pretty and I'd like to try it. We're still going y'all, we got a few more things here. Um, the Fenty Beauty Slip Shine Sheer Shiny Lipstick. Slip Shine Sheer Shiny Lipstick. This they call an ultra comfortable sheer lipstick with the perfect amount of nourishing color and shine. A lot of brands have these kinds of shiny lipsticks these days and it might be fun to do a full on comparison of all of them, both high end and drugstore because I just think there's a lot out there. But if I were to pick one shade, I might go for the one called Retro Rose. This they call a dusty pink. And sometimes when I'm just trying to hone in on one shade, like okay, you wanna try a product, you wanna get a sense of the formula, what one shade would you get? I try to go a little bit middle of the road because I think, okay, what would I get a lot of wear out of? Um, what is not going to be so light that it's too sheer to show and not so dark that it looks streaky in this kind of formula? I tend to think a medium kind of tone would give me the best shot at success with the product. So Retro Rose is a shade that I think appears to be really pretty. It just looks really soft and delicate on the model. I'm thinking, yeah, I think I'd like that. Mascara, I gotta throw a mascara in here. Marc Jacobs has this new, um, brand new at Lashed Lengthening and Curling Mascara. And to look at the brush, it's definitely the kind of brush I tend to like. It looks really bristly and bushy, um, tapered toward the tip, kind of giving me a Tarte Lights Camera Lashes mascara type vibe. The claim of lengthening and curling appeals to me because that's kind of where I have issues. How does it already have 1,100 190 reviews. Is this something that just got re-promoted? Was it out before? I swear I found it under the news section. But looking at the before and afters of the models, I'm thinking it looks pretty thickening actually and makes me kind of think of a superhero vibe. So it might be good to compare to that one. So I've got that in my cart. Also from Laneige, this thing called Glowy Makeup Serum. I'm starting to realize I've pretty much liked anything I've tried from Laneige, different samples. You know, I talked about that face cream. What was it called? Water Bank. I've course love the lip sleeping mask, but this they say is a lightweight hydrating serum that keeps oil in check for visibly smoother skin and longer lasting makeup wear. And I just thought that would be an easy, fun claim to be able to test, you know? I was thinking of maybe doing my makeup one way, one day, and then the following day doing my makeup exactly the same with the only change being putting this serum underneath and seeing if I could notice a difference and trying to keep my activity level or, you know, my exposure to the outdoors sort of the same both days. I thought it might be fun to test that. There are so many things that claim to extend your makeup wear, but I thought I kind of trust this brand, you know? Moving on, there's more Pat McGrath in here. Like I said, everything's kind of jumbled all over, but the Sublime Perfection Setting Powder. I feel like I should try this because like I said, I've got the foundation. I've also got the concealer, which I really, really like. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to get a sense of the full look by having um, the setting powder as well? So I would go 
go for the lightest shade in that. It says it has a lighter than air proprietary powder blend, an ultralight pure powder blend that gives a barely their feel on the skin with a unique sensorial application. Oh, they're trying to reel me in with this, but I would like to try it out, really. Do you ever get to that point where you're like, well, I've tried enough from this brand. I don't want to leave out like that one key product that might be keeping me from having really good success with everything as a whole. That's just the story in my head as I think through this. Um, Bare Minerals Gen Nude Eyeshadow Palettes. I love these little six color eye palettes and this rose one. They're showing rose, neutral, and latte. I have the neutral one. The latte one looks really good. You know, it's got that burgundy in there, but the rose kind of for its coolness, I, I feel like it might be something slightly different for me. Just a little different spin to take my look in because I do have a lot of the warmth going on in my collection. And who was it? I ran across a Lisa Lisa D1 video and she was using that palette and it looked really, really nice. And I just love the textures in there. I love the size of the palette. I love the vertical nature of the mirror. There's just so much going right with those and I really want that. Now Urban Decay, they've got their Naked Ultraviolet Eyeshadow Palette and oof, what to do here, what to do. I mean, it looks super pretty. Various tones of purple in there from a berry orchid look to kind of a cooler, more bluish purple. And then seemingly a whole chunk of the palette that just looks basically neutral to mix in. I almost feel like, gosh, do I need another purple palette? Absolutely not. I do not. But for me, as one who tests makeup, it's kind of like, okay, I've been with Urban Decay Naked palettes all through this palette journey. Should I really honestly stop now that they've come out with a purple one? Or should I go through with it and give it a chance. Um, I'm really feeling like giving it a chance. And that, my friends, wraps up my um, full card. It's actually $1,000.89. But that's my dream card. That was really just going through, not even really thinking or paying much attention to the price tag, and just picking out things. And I thought it might be fun to just talk about makeup in this manner, where you can see what's attracting me, and we can kind of just talk about what we like without having a lot of other strings attached. Now, what will I actually keep in the cart. A lot of it I'm going to say here I don't really need. This Huda Silk Balm, I mean I'm loaded with lip balms so that's a total justification for skipping that. The Hourglass Illusion thing, I think maybe I could at least wait on that because I've got such a large amount of BB and CC type products right now. I do really want to try that Ilia because it just seems so unique. I'm really intrigued. And that ABH palette that's been marked down, I feel like it's easier to justify that somehow. I think I'll wait on the Pat McGrath palettes too. I'm still going to hold off. They're very expensive and I kind of do like the idea of trying to recreate the looks that they show online just with stuff I already have. We'll probably wait on that Charlotte Tilbury foundation too, honestly. You know, I'm not saying I won't ever try it, but I just don't think I need it and I've got too much stuff to use up. Thinking about what really feels essential to me. For my channel's sake and for my sake of wanting to test out, I feel like I need to try the ultraviolet eyeshadow palette from Urban Decay. So I might go with that, the Ilia, the Norvina, and possibly that Bare Minerals one. That might be the stuff that actually stays in as part of this haul. The other things I feel like are not really essential to me right now, not a real pressing thing that I need to try at this moment, or just a type of product that's already sort of overloaded in my collection. So in that sense, it's kind of easy for me to look at some of those things and say, well, I can, it can wait. So anyway, guys, if you want to try this video as a tag, consider yourself tagged to let me know how it goes. I just think it's a really fun way to look at makeup and talk about makeup and enjoy makeup. It actually felt fun to fill my cart, but with the knowledge that no, I really don't need everything. You can like things, you can still appreciate things without having to buy them. So anyway, thank you guys for your time and I'll see you soon. Bye.